All right, today we're going to talk about feeds from the second base position to second base on a double play turn. I uh, have my friend Jack helping out today. Uh, what we're going to look at is the different ways we make throws to second base in relation to where we are on the field and relation to second base. Uh, we have three different cones set up. We're going to take you through the different spots and how to approach a throw to second base from each of those spots. Now as a watcher of youth games, a lot of times what I see, no matter where the kid is on the diamond, when they go to field that ball, they stand up, they turn their whole body, and then they throw to second base to start that double play. We want to teach the kids to get away from that a little bit. We want to get them using their feet um, and controlling their body a little bit better so they can make that quick, accurate throw to second base um, and give their shortstop a chance to turn a double play. So we're going to start over here. Um, this cone represents uh, where we would play normally as a second baseman, uh, straight up, uh, halfway in between first and second base. Um, from this position here, um, this is not where we want to be if we have a runner on first base. So the general rule is to take about two steps over and then two steps up. Uh, I have them a little bit further away than that. This distance all depends on your, your batter. Uh, if he's a lefty or a righty, if he's fast or slow, uh, if your runner is fast or slow, uh, if, you're, if you think the hitter may bunt or not, uh, the second baseman has a pretty big job to do. So this distance here all depends on lots of different factors. So we're going to go ahead with about right here. So you can see the difference between regular depth and double play depth. We're a little bit closer to second base. In case the ball is hit to shortstop, we give our ourselves a chance to get over to second base to get the throw from shortstop but we also have to worry about the bunt because we have bunt coverage at first base. So from this position right here, I can do a couple different things. Uh, for the more advanced players, we can work on feeling that ball with our right foot slightly behind our left foot. And what this does, it already opens us up, clears our hips so that we can make a throw to second base. So I'm gonna throw over to Jack here. What this does is we feel, it lets us open up our hips and make a good throw to our second base, our shortstop that's coming across the bag. Okay, again, this is a little bit more advanced uh, for the older players to feel that ball instead of having feet straight across from each other to get the feeling of being open, feeling, staying low, and making a good throw to second base. So that's one way to do that. The other way, is to simply feel that ball and pivot on both of our toes, get our hips pointed towards our target, and make a snap throw like a dart to second base. So we go down, we field, we turn, we snap, and we make a good throw there. Okay, either one is acceptable. Like I said, the first one, you may wanna work on with some older, more experienced players. Okay, so again, open, clear our hips, make a good throw, or field normally, turn on both toes, make that snap dart throw over to second base. Whichever one you choose to do and work on, okay, we want to make sure that we stay nice and low and we don't pop up. Okay, There's really no need for us to pop up. This is a short throw, so we should be able to stay low and still make a nice firm throw to second base. Now, if the ball is hit back towards where we started in regular depth, okay, we have some couple different uh, things we can do for that. So if I'm playing double play depth and the ball is hit this way, but I can still get around the ball and get in front of it, I'm gonna feel that ball, but now I'm further away from second base. So I need to incorporate a drop step. And all a drop step is, is we're feeling, again, is to open up our hips. Okay, I'm gonna open up my hips, and now I can get a good throw to second base again. Okay, if we don't clear our hips there, we can't make a throw. The, again, the one thing we wanna stay away from is popping up, turning our whole body, and throwing to second base because that takes too much time. So we wanna field, open up, clear our hips, and make a good throw to second base. 
and give our shortstop a chance to turn that double play. If we want, if we're ranging even further over, okay, we can also incorporate a jump step and throw. And again, that's faster than just standing up and turning our body. So we want to get that here, jump step, and make a good throw over to second base. So two different ways to make that throw to shortstop or to second base with your shortstop covering if we're ranging in the hole. Now if we have to reach outside of our bodies, okay, at that point it becomes a spin move or if we don't think we can get that runner at second, we just go ahead and take that out at first base. Going back to double play depth, now if we have a ball that's hit towards second base, okay, we're ranging over here, uh, we have this next cone set up here. When we get into this area right here, we're going to get into a flip territory. Okay. Now it's important with the flip that you let your shortstop know that the flip is coming because they're going to be watching for the ball coming out of this slot right up here. And if you throw something from down here, they might not be ready for it. So we're going to feel that ball. Now the important thing with the flip, we're not going to turn our whole body and take the ball back and throw it like a bowling ball. Okay, we're going to actually take that ball from the glove and start our flip right from our glove. Now a couple things with the flip. We want to have, we want to lock this arm and lock our wrist. Okay, the one thing we do not want to do is flip our wrist up when we make that flip. That will cause the ball to go straight up and over our shortstop's head. So when we feel that ball, we want to have a nice straight arm, locked wrist, and we're going to snap that ball. And after we throw, we're going to keep our fingers down. The other thing is, we're going to follow our throw. So when we feel this ball here, we're going to flip, and then our left leg is going to go to the bag. And we're actually going to take a couple steps, almost like we're going to give the shortstop a high five after we flip it. All of those things will guarantee a nice, accurate flip for our shortstop. Remember, he has a runner coming down on him. We want to give him the best possible flip to keep him out of danger as well. So the flip from this area here, we're in a field, again, we're not going to take the ball out of the glove and go back behind our bodies and turn our bodies. We're going to field, and right from here, we're going to yell flip, and then flip it to our shortstop and follow our throw. I'm going to show you that one more time. So we field here, we yell flip, my left foot comes along, and I follow my throw. Now the other move that can be incorporated here, but um, which I think also needs to be practiced an awful lot, is the shovel from this position right here. So the shovel, we're just going to get that ball and we're going to shovel it to our shortstop coming across the bag. Now with the shovel, we still want to have that ball on our fingertips and we want to shovel that ball so our thumb is pointing down and again we're snapping that ball. All throws to our shortstop need to be to that back corner of the bag to keep him out of the way of the runner. So you need to practice the shovel so that you can get accurate with it. So when we go in the field, okay, we're just going to shovel that ball to the shortstop and again we're going to follow our throw to make sure we're nice and accurate. So we field, shovel, and follow. Okay, we always follow our throws. Absolutely a must. And that's the flip. Now if you have to range any further over, if you're making a play way close to the bag here, you need to have that communication with your shortstop that, hey, I'm going to take it myself. My general rule is if you have to go more than three steps to the bag, get it to them with a flip or a shovel because a throw is always quicker than you taking those three steps, changing direction and throwing to first base. So again, starting from regular depth, okay, when we have a runner on, we have a double play opportunity, we want to shift over, general rule is two steps over, two steps in, again, you're giving yourself a chance to get to second base if the ball is hit to the shortstop or third baseman, but also you have to be ready for uh, a bunt where you need to be covering first base. So from this position here, we have 
two things we can do. We can feel the ball with our right foot slightly back. So we get our hips turned and make a good throw to second base. If we're not quite that advanced yet, we can feel the ball regular, still stay low. We're going to turn, get both of our knees and our belly button pointed towards the target. Again, making a good throw over to second base. If the ball takes us towards first base, or excuse me, towards second base, we're going to incorporate the flip. Remember, we're going to yell flip before we flip it out of the glove. We're going to take the ball from our glove and flip, and then follow our throw with our left leg. And we also have the option of that shovel pass. We're field here, shovel it to our shortstop, giving him a good throw, good shot at getting the runner at first base. Um, those are your basic feeds to second base on a double play from the second base position.